how I normally start with an actress or an actor for that matter is that I take a bunch of stuff for them to try on, things that I've rented, things that I found that are sort of within the, the, the feel of how I think the character should be. And from that, you can generally tell which way it should go, what's going to work, what's not going to work. They tell me what they like, what they don't like. And then between us, we decide the sort of direction that I'm going to go in. We've tried to be as authentic as possible and as close to, as possible to uh, the characters that we're, we're portraying. Howard Hughes, for instance, I've looked at all of the things that he actually wore and really tried to recreate that. I mean, not absolutely, completely down to the tiniest detail. I, I obviously can't get some of the same fabrics. The pictures I'm looking at are in black and white most of the time, and so we're doing colour. So I have to imagine what the colours would have been. He starts off as a young man. He starts off fairly well put together. I mean, he did actually have all his uh, suits tailor-made at Savile Row. Um, expensively dressed, well made. As time passes and he gets a little older, he gets less concerned with his appearance. And although his clothes probably are expensive, they start to not look it. I mean, they start to be worn in a, in a kind of scruffy way. Um, clothing, obviously, and his appearance is not important to him. He's got more important things to think about. So there is a deterioration. Then there's a point where Catherine Hepburn leaves him where he just really goes to pieces, burns everything he owns, and then starts again, starts from scratch with two off-the-peg suits. And kind of, that's about it. That's all he wears. He wears a dark suit and a light suit and a pair of old sneakers. I knew beforehand that Howard Hughes, early in his life, was a bit of a fashion aficionado and liked to dress up nice and have great-looking suits. After Sandy did her research, I had hundreds and hundreds of changes and tons of time working with her, which was a joy. And she also did an incredible job in capturing the transition from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s with, with the women that she worked with. It's Catherine Hepburn. I look at actual things that she was wearing, but then I'm looking at Kate Blanchett and I'm doing something that maybe works for Kate Blanchett that would have worked for Catherine Hepburn, but sort of sums up the look as opposed to recreate exactly specifically down to the last detail. The costumes were fantastic. And working with, with Sandy and um, with Morag and Kathy who did the makeup and hair, it's really important, all of those things. Uh, the building blocks, the external part of a character. Ava is actually over quite a small period of time in a way. Uh, we see her first in 1938 in the Pantages scene. And then the next few times we see her, we're in the same group of years. So there's not necessarily a progression. There's going to be different looks for her. We have a smart when she's out in company. There's going to be a scene where she's at home, which again is still glamorous, but it's not quite as dressed up. It's not in a suit. Yeah, and you get the hair right and the costume right and the makeup, you, you definitely get a certain kind of difference in your bearing and how you walk and how you stand. And that, that all helps. Through the 20s, 30s, 40s, you've got to credit as a costume designer if you just dress the leading lady. Nowadays, our job is totally different. I'm responsible for every single person that you see, every extra, every principal. One person is, is in control of a, a much huger area.